Hello, you most amazing humans. Miss Palmer here, and let's get into these notes on reading circle graphs and histograms. All right, well, first let's put our date. I was actually about to forget, but I did not. And what unit we're on, just to keep ourselves organized and keep our notes organized and make sure that we are, you know, keeping our stuff organized so we can find it later, right? We are still in Teak 7.6G and 7.12A and all that good stuff. Let's get into these histogram sides and then we'll come back and do the circle graph side. Um, some quick notes, they are very similar to dot plots. Uh, they, they have titles and labels of things. So when we're reading our histograms, we will make sure that we read the titles and labels. Um, we need to observe if there's any sort of skip counting or um, ranges to be aware of. And then we have some percent reminders because we usually deal with percents when we have graphs and diagrams. So if there is a percent of a number, that means to multiply, right? Because of means to multiply. So for example, 20% of 160 means we multiply 20% as a decimal, 0 0.2 times 160. Or we set up a proportion. And to go with this example, then I would do, actually we'll just do percent out of 100 would be what out of your total? Cross multiply divide. So in this case, it would be 20 out of 100 is what out of 160? Cross multiply divide. <clears throat> okay, let's get into some example questions. So the number of strikeouts each pitcher on a team threw in their most recent game is shown below. So here's our graph. We have the baseball strikeouts. We have pitchers on the left-hand side over here, and then the number of strikeouts on the bottom. When I, before I even get to the question and answer choices, I like to read everything that I can possibly read from the graph that's relatively easy. Like, for instance, Carlos, I don't know my total, but I know the total of each player. And I want to make it a bit easier for me to read the total of each player, so I like to write the total at the end of each Thing. Like on a dot plot, it would be at the top of the tower. All right, so you got nine, Samara got five, Justin got 11, Jose got eight, and Mark got four. That's each player's personal amount of strikeouts, but we still don't know the total total. So let's add up all of these, 13 plus nine, plus five, plus 11, eight, and four to figure out how many total strikeouts there are. Fifty. So my total is fifty. Okay, so now getting into the questions, probably make it easier because I already have some information in my brain, right? Which of the following pictures account for a total of 40% of the strikeouts? So I see 40% of the strikeouts. Ooh, and there's that magic word of we discussed up here, right? With the percent reminders. What, what? Here, sorry. Keep uh, covering the graph. So I can go through each answer choice and figure out, is that 40%? Um, I kind of want to find what is 40% of the total strikeouts first. So 40% of strikeouts is 50, right? Because we know the total is 50. 40% of 50, I can do 0.4 times 50, which comes out to 20. Or I could do 40 out of 100 is what out of 50? And then I would just scale this by dividing by two to both, because whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And I get from 100 to 50 by dividing by two. So 40 divided by two is 20. And I can get the answer that way. Or I can always revert back to what I know, which is cross multiply and divide. Always an option. All right, so I'm looking for a total sum of 20 strikeouts. This is where I'm going to pull out those numbers that we already found. So Jose, Samar, and Justin. Jose had eight, Samar had five, and Justin had 11. You know, I have some room down here. I'm just gonna 
reshow this work down here. Clean up my writing, right? So eight plus five plus 11, does that equal 20? Well, eight plus five is 13. 13 plus 11 is 24. So no, it can't be A. B. B is you and Justin. U is 9, and Justin is 11, which is 20. So that is my answer. But clearly you know we're going to go through the other answer choices just to validate and make sure that that is my answer, which honestly, guys, is also a test-taking strategy. For this star, I highly encourage you to go through every single answer choice to make sure that the one that you chose is the right one. So, C. Mark, Samar, and Jose. Mark had four, Samar had five, and Jose has eight, or had eight. Four plus five is nine, nine plus eight is 17, which is not 20. B is still looking like a really great answer. All right, lastly, D, Jose and Carlos put together. Jose eight, Carlos 13. And I know eight and 13 put together is 21, which again is not 20, and that's the magic number I'm looking for, so B is my final answer. Done. Okay, let's go through another one. Which of the following statements best describes the data? You and Jose have as many strikeouts as Carlos. So again, I'm just gonna put my work down here to kind of clean it up. You and Jose have as many strikeouts as Carlos. So first, you and Jose, you is nine, Jose is eight. You and Jose have as many, so that equals Carlos. Well, Eight plus nine does not equal 13. So A does not look like my answer. And I'm sorry, let's go back to the question just to, because I was trying to think, am I trying to find the one that's true or not true? And it says, which of the following statements best describes the data? So I'm looking for the true answer. A is not true, because you and Jose have more strikeouts than Carlos. All right, B. You know, actually, guys, how about y'all go through the rest of the answer choices and... See what you get. Okay, beauties. Um, this one actually kind of, honestly, it tripped me up too, especially answer choice B. Um, my final answer came out to C, and I hope that you guys were able to get that. But answer choice B tripped me up because Mark doesn't have twice as many strikeouts as Jose. Because down here, if you see my work, it says four times two. No. Mark has half as many. So that, this was wrong. I should not have, <laughs> I should not have done that. Um, Mark equals twice as many as Jose, so that too should have been over here, which is clearly not the choice, not the, not the right answer, because Mark does not have twice as many. He has half as many. Um, answer choice C was your answer because Carlos accounts for more than 25%, and if I found 13 out of 50, and I exchange or turn that into a percent is what out of 100 multiplying by two to both, which equals 26. And 26 is greater than 25%. And then what the work that you see that I did there is I found what is 25% of 50, which is 12 and a half, and 13 is greater than 12 and a half. So again, C came out to be the right answer. Um, but wow, that one kind of tripped me up. So if it was tough for you, Saul Goodman, because it was honestly tough for me too. Okay, let's get into some circle graphs. Uh, circle graphs are, honestly, they're not as bad as you may think. Be yes, we are dealing with percents with circle graphs, but the beautiful thing is your total is out of the whole, which in most cases, and especially for seventh grade math star, is percents, so 100. So if there's any like missing piece of data that you need to find, you know your total is 100. Add up the known values and subtract what you don't know. Um, they are cut into pi second sections. Uh, they are dealt with in percents. And then again, I have another percent reminder here for you guys with a different example. 17% of 50 means to multiply 0.17 
times 50. Or set up a proportion. Percent out of 100 equals what out of your total? Cross multiply, divide, or scale. Okay, we have two examples. I'm going to do the bottom one as the teaching example. So make sure you're listening to what I'm saying and writing down. So use that pause function. That's why we have it. Okay, Phoebe surveyed 50 classmates. That's my total about their favorite ice cream flavors. So I have my favorite ice cream flavors. I see that coffee is 14%, chocolate's 42, strawberries 18, and vanilla is missing a percent, which is fine because I know how to find the missing piece. But I, my question is asking how many more students chose vanilla over strawberry? How many more tells me that I'm subtracting at some point? If I don't subtract anything, then I'm, I might be doing it wrong. St students chose vanilla over strawberry. Well, I see strawberry is 18. Vanilla, I don't know. But it's fine. We know how to figure it out. We're going to add together all of our known values and then subtract it from 100. Go ahead and try that. Let me know what you get. Yay, 26%. All right, so first I need to figure out Okay, there's actually two ways to solve this. I can find what 26% of 50 is and what 18% of 50 is and then subtract those answers. Or I can subtract 26 minus 18 first to figure out how much more percentage-wise students chose vanilla over strawberry, which comes out to what, eight? No, six? Yeah, no, I was right, eight, because 18 plus eight is 26. I can see what eight percent out of 50 is and get my answer that way. Um, you know what? I actually vote this way. So we subtracted first. This is subtracting after. Uh, sorry, subtracting before. Man, I need to get my words right. This is before. And then this is, no, this is subtracting after. I was right the first time. Jeez, Palmer, get it together. Because you have to find what 26% is and 18% is and then subtract. Ugh. This is subtracting after or before, holy smokes, because I subtracted the percents to figure out what that, how much more percentage-wise students chose vanilla over strawberry, and now I'm just finding what 8% of 50 is. All right, to find 8% of 50, you can cross multiply and divide. I'm just going to cut it in half. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So 100 divided by 2 is 50. 8 divided by 2 is 4. D is your final answer. Okay, choose whichever choice, sorry, whichever strategy you want to use and try that for this one with Miss O'Connor. She took a poll out of 80 students, so you know that that's your total. And you're trying to figure out how many more, subtract, students get to school on a bus than in a car. All right, guys, I chose to subtract before just to find out how much more in percent did students get on the bus in the car which is 10 so 40 minus 30 is 10 and then I found right here what 10 percent of 80 is I cost cross off my zeros and I got one out of 10 and I just use scale factor 10 times 8 is 80 so I know 1 times 8 is my answer or <laughs> You could have just found 10% of 80, which means you move the decimal to the left one time, which is eight. Or you could have found 40% of 80 and 30% of 80, which also would have been really easy because you just multiply by eight for both of them. 32 and 24, and then when you subtract 32 and 24, you still get eight as your answer. So eight would have been your answer, either strategy you chose, but 
There you have it, folks. If you have any questions on any of this and you were just like, what in the world did she just say to me? Was she speaking German? Um, ask your teacher, guys. I mean, literally, like stop the video right now, raise your hand and say, hey, miss, I need help. Uh, but clearly wait for your teacher to call on you. Please do not yell in the middle of the class. Okay, bye.